Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Willa. I'm a fourth year PhD student at Gilson Lab at UCSD. Uh, today, I wanted to talk to you about a simple polarizable electrostatic model that we developed for molecular dynamic simulations. Perfect. So today I want to quickly talk about the current polarizable models because this is not a new concept. We already know there are a lot of polarizable force field out there. And every time we have a bad simulation result, especially for protein ligand, we blend that, oh, our, our force field is not polarizable. There might, must be some um, errors happening there. Um, next up, I want to talk about this polarizable and why do we want to uh, develop it for the for the use with open force field. And mm -hmm. finally, I would like to talk about a little bit benchmarking results that uh, showed using our polarizable force field. So for the electrostatic part, uh, why do we care about the polarizabilities? That's because in the molecular mechanics, we use the Coulomb's law to calculate electrostatic interactions. And in the Coulomb's law, we have, we have the dielectric constant as a, uh, as a contribution to the potential energies. And in the vacuum, the dielectric constant is usually 1.1, and in non-polar uh, solvent is usually 2.1, not 2.0. However, uh, when we do have solvents involved that's for water, that's usually around 80. And using explicit solvent, we simulate this part explicitly. So if we do not have a good force field to represent the dielectric constant, we will not have a good uh, electrostatic potential energies. So that's why we care about it. And to talk a little bit more about how is it involved. So, with the, um, so when we do have solvent involved in the simulations, there will be electric field around the uh, system. And when there are electric field and every atom has a polarizabilities, they were induced a polarization effect. And those are not involved, they are not, not included explicitly in non polarizable force field. So, uh, with a non polarizable force, non -polarizable force field, we're not able to get a correct or a relatively correct dielectric constant, which leads to the not very correct potential energies for uh, in electrostatics. And in the non polarizable force field, we really have the rotational. Um, polarizability involved. And um, however, if we do have a nonpolar environment, there will not be much of the rotational um, polarizability involved. So we will not be able to have a good representation. And that's, and also we're missing a big part of the electronic uh, polarizabilities. So for the current model, we already have, uh, we have three models induced dipole model that's widely used um, in amoeba or this figure is taken from I amoeba water model, the, 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 in, the induced electronic polarization is included using the induced dipole. And another popular polarizable force field is Jude uh, polarizable force field. That includes um, a dump dummy atoms next to the parent atoms to include the induced dipole and includes the electronic polarization. And another one is the fluctuating charges that's based on the electron activities. Uh, the, the, prob the problem with fluctuating charges is there's no out of plane polarizabilities involved. So in this, polar in this polarizable force field we developed, we wanted to be fast compared to amoeba because we use direct direct approximation of the polarizability or polarization, which means we only taken the first order of the polarization. And that means uh, for all the electric field that's involved in re inducing the dipole moment are all just all generated by the permanent electrostatics. So there will be no induced dipole, induced dipole interaction. And that's why it's fast because there is no self-consistent uh, solving involved. And in order to use the polarizabilities in uh, molecular dynamic simulations, we need permanent electrostatics to work with that. So in this work, we introduced two charge model to work with polarizabilities. 
And we also implemented a Smyrna plugin to handle the polarizabilities induced dipole and our charge model. So we can use our uh, induced dipole model with open force field. And that will be the applications used with uh, open force field and um, open MM for the benchmarking. So as we um, talked about earlier, the, in the direct polarization is introduced by, the, by induced dipole and the polarizabilities will only fail the permanent electrostatics. And because, uh, so um, in that case, it will be a better representation for the electrostatics compared to the fixed charge model because the fixed charge model will not fail any of the external um, electric field and not respond to that. And it will be faster to compare to the self-consistent polarizations, which is used in, um, I, uh, in amoeba, where you have the induced dipole will interact with the permanent charges and the induced dipole. So it's, um, if you could see that, it would be the red arrows interacting with the uh, black arrows and they have to be solved self-consistently at every time step. So that's very expensive and it's hard to parameterize. In our uh, model, the middle one, we only have the permanent electrostatics to induce the induced dipole. And we type the polarizability. So every time you just need to look at the force field file and you will have um, the, everything to induce the polarization effect. So since talking about looking at the force field file and look, look for the force, the polarizabilities, where do we get the polarizabilities? Which the good thing about having polariz polarizable force field is that you can train your polarizabilities on gas phase data but it can still reproduce pretty well condensed phase data. And training on gas phase data save a lot of time for us. So we train our polarizabilities on gas phase QM ESPs. And what we do is we impose some electric field on one of the molecule and we calculate the electrostatic potential around them. And we take the differences and using induced dipole to reproduce the differences in electrostatic potentials. And that would be our, our polarizabilities. And another thing is we train the polarizabilities without any permanent electrostatics. So in that case, our polarizability will be independent of a charge model. And that gave us some freedom to find the best charges to reproduce the baseline electrostat electrostatics. And that two charge model I'm talking about, uh, the first one is a REST style um, Char char partial charges. That means well, the charges are also fitted to the electrostatics potentials. But for this one, it has the induced dipole when we're fitting to the electrostatics. Another one is a faster model that's N1BCC dipole model. And that uh, works similarly to the N1BCC in, in the context of RASP and A1BCC. It is a faster model but it is also retrained. The BCC parameters are retrained to consider the induced dipole effect. So that's the two electrostatics model we're trying to introduce here. So a little bit more intel, uh, details into the charge model. This is a standard RAS fitting ob objective function. And what is different in the charge fitting part is we have the um, induced uh, the, the electrostatic potential from the induced dipole that's circled here. Um, and what is there is the induced polarization we included. So what's also uh, the polarizabilities at the atom center will re interact or respond to the local electric field. And since we're using in direct polarization, the electric field E is generated by the permanent charges and there is no self-consistent solving involved. So even if it looks a little bit complicated, but it's a very um, it's an easier process to solve for the rest style charges with the, in the context of polarization. In, uh, and oh wait, hold on. Good. All right, so that is the rest depot style, and what wait, and what is with the A01 BCC depot? So as I mentioned earlier, we retrained the BCC parameters to include the induced polarization effect. 
And we change the um, objective function of the BCCs to also include the V-induced part. And the V-induced part is generated similarly to the previous REST part. Um, but the, the, the bigger one is the newly trained BCC parameters. And they will only be trained once uh, against QM electrostatics. And after that training, we'll be able to use the A1 BCC depot model, just like A1 BCCs. There is no other QM calculation involved. You can use open FF toolkit to generate that. That part is done by um, Simon's open FF recharge package. And so that is the true charge model we introduced for work, working with polarizabilities. And what is involved in the training process in the polarizabilities is QM ESP data. And we will have the polarizability library and the library is used to train the, another library BCCs. So overall, all we need to use this polarizable model is the already trained polarizability library here and another already trained BCC depot library there. So no uh, actual additional QOM calculation needed if you want to use this model. So that is about the model and how are we doing with gas phase dipole moment calculation because we want our polarizable model to be able to reproduce both gas phase, uh, gas phase data and condensed phase data. So how are we doing with molecular polarizability? That's uh, experimental data. Since our, Q, since our polarizabilities are purely derived from QM calculations, we wanted to be able to reproduce experimental data. And finally, how are we doing with molecular dynamic simulations? We're looking at dielectric constant to check that part. And um, this is a little details into how are we going to use our force field ways OpenMM and Smirnoff plugin. And also this is the infrastructure we need to introduce a new polarizable water model that's used with direct polarization and our permanent electrostatics. And we introduced two um, handlers there. One is called the multiples, that is our permanent electrostatics. And another one is the polarizabilities that's already defined polarizabilities. And um, so for the benchmarking and the training of polarizabilities, we did train two sets of polarizabilities. One is based on elements that only have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogens to um, make sure that the direct polarization model actually works. And another one is trained on the Sage Landon Jones type that has 17 types in the force field, so we also trained based on those. And that is for us to explore, does having more types actually help with the electronic polarization? So looking at the gas phase dipole moment reproduced by N1 BCC depot, we say that uh, we choose the QM reference data at MP2 level because based on benchmarking results, that is the best uh, affordable MP, uh, QM dipole moment references. So. Uh, using both typed polarizabilities, we are able to reproduce this quantity very, very well. And uh, they, there is no much significant improvement from using more types. And that opens the question, do we actually need more types for polarizabilities? And that is about the gas phase, that's about the gas phase polarizabilities, uh, gas phase dipole moment for the electrostatics. How are we doing with the uh, liquid phase experimental molecular polarizabilities? So in this case, we also measured the molecular polarizabilities using the two types of atomic polarizabilities. The way to measure that is to sum up the atomic polarizabilities and that will return the molecular polarizabilities. And uh, as, as we can see, there is, there is a very good agreement with experimental polarizabilities. And we can really tell if having more types help with uh, uh, in terms of the polarizabilities. And so finally, we did, uh, we did molecular dynamic simulations using the polarizable model. And we compared the dielectric constant calculations with non-polarizable SIG model. And there are 17 polar and non-polar organic liquids that's included in the 
um, benchmarking data set. For the non-polarized voltage model, well, we can say that there's not a very good agreement and that's kind of to be expected because for all those values that uh, that's sitting, sitting there around 1.0, those are non-polar organic liquids. And there are no much fluctuation in the dipole moment when they're in the liquid phase. So there will be no, no much contribution from there. And all that's coming from is the one, um, a constant one that's used in the formula to calculate dielectric constant. And we also plot inverse dielectric constant here because um, the Coulomb's potential energies is inversely proportion, pro proportional to the dielectric constant. And, and uh, using switching to use a uh, polarizable force field, we're able to improve the agreement with experimental dielectric constant. And using element typed and switch typed um, polarizabilities are all able to give us the better agreement. And, um, and, and that, is the, the ver that, that is the desirable results we want with a polarizable force field. So finally, the, the experiments with AN1BCC dipole charge model and the induced uh, in, and the direct polarization is able to improve the accuracies in both gas phase and condensed phase calculations. And since we have tight polarizabilities and the fast charge model, everything is very fast to come to parameterize and the system will be ready to go uh, with open FF intercharge interchange um, toolkit. And, and that is uh, that is all I have for the polarizable model. And I think I'm right on time. Thank you all for the attentions.